and then everybody was throwing up and there was this kitten in my back seat everybody was crying and you know that's uh that's how the week ended that sounds really sad it's what it is buddy <laughs> i guess that's life yeah 2016 What's up, YouTube and other um, social media networks? Social media networks. <laughs> All right, we weren't kidding when we said we were drinking on this one, so I'm a little gone already. Uh, this is your um, this is the enthusiast with uh, one of your hosts, Jesse Nazario, here with the um, well, the famous and the funny and the good-looking overall guy. Will Zabo, or as I pronounce Zabo. How you been? How's your year so far? It's good so far. Can't can't complain, you know? Here with a great friends, eating, drinking, about to play, doing a podcast, and maybe play some board games before the new year rolls in. Yes. Uh, you maybe turn off Titanfall 2, because you haven't finished it, and I'm pretty far into it. Yeah, you're further than me. I've been still soaked up in Final Fantasy 15. It's a good game. Great game. Titanfall 2 is pretty good, too. Overall, I was pleased with my game choices. So, uh, change of direction, though. We had a great loss this past week. Um, Miss Princess Leia, or General Leia, or overall Senator Leia, how you see her, Carrie Fisher passed away. Um, anybody that didn't know that, I don't know where you've been. Under a rock, I guess, but... I just want to point out that Carrie Fisher was very important in uh, my life, at least. Anybody that grew up watching the Star Wars movies, because she was that first female I've ever seen that didn't need to be rescued. You know, her man got frozen in carbonite, so she was like, wait for a rescue? No, no thank you. I'm going to dress up like a bounty hunter, and I'm getting him myself. Um, she was just that tough chick, man, and I think she was everybody's first crush. At least my first crush growing up. I agree, yeah. She was a pretty foxy lady. Yes, she was. Um, and even all the cameos she did later in her life and the fact that she, I don't know, she just seemed like a true fan. I remember her from her cameo in Jane and Silent Bob, her cameo in Fanboys, and uh, as recently as um, the one with the nerds. What's that show called? Big Bang Theory? Big Bang Theory. Um, she just overall seemed like a really down-to-earth cool chick, so... Uh, overall, pretty much, we're going to have a moment of silence for starting uh, now. All right. It's 2016. Yeah, it's Lost a lot of people, man. Yeah. A lot of uh, different things happened. Some people can see this bad stuff happened. Uh, other people might see it's changing things. So, um, how do you feel? The year is about to come to an end. Midnight tonight. Well, uh, Charlie Sheen was wrong. They haven't taken Trump from us yet. <laughs> no, it hasn't. But, um, you know what? Um, as a year in whole, it really felt very... I felt like it flew by for one, but it did feel like it had a lot of... A lot more downs than ups, I would say personally. But uh, 2017 is about to begin, and hopefully that means we'll have more ups than downs this time. Yeah, I can see that. Um, that was, the, I guess, the way you look at it. So, not all bad things happened this year. I became a father again. That's true. That did happen this year. I became a godfather. Yes, you became a godfather. Um, my child stole your birthday, so <laughs> congratulations on that. It's true. Um, you know, with life and beautifulness and all that was, because it was beautiful, you know. And Father again, um, there's, there's always going to be sadness. I know one thing that hit me real hard was um, Alan Rickman. So sad, man. That's that's the one that, like, just... Carrie Fisher was bad, but he, he was also another one that I felt really bad. Just every performance he's done, I've always loved him. From Die Hard, Harry Potter, even that robot in... Uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, <laughs> like, overall, I just loves him as an actor. Um, it's one of my favorite movies of all time, Dogma. 
he plays the voice of God and like it's just it was perfect that nobody else could do that role so that that's what's going to hurt the most out of 2016 for me you buddy Admiral Akbar. Admiral Akbar. It was a trap. Is it a trap? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Uh... A lot of Star Wars people went, man. You know, we lost R two D two, Princess Leia, Admiral Akbar. Well, yeah. they're they're getting up there in age. Yeah. You know, I mean, Star Wars came out a while ago. So I was uh, reading an article. Um, can't remember his name. The gentleman that played Chewbacca in every Star Wars movie it came back for Force Awakens. Of course, couldn't do all the scenes, so they had another actor doing it. Mm-hmm. And they really didn't say what scenes were who, so we wouldn't really know. Which I think that's really neat. But yeah, you're right, man. They are getting up there. Yeah. Um, it's just a shame. Out of the big three, Carrie Fisher was the youngest. Yeah, but she also had a lot of health problems. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought it was a little upsetting when she was in the hospital. They said she was okay, and then next thing I hear, she passed away. It's like yeah. that took a turn for the worse real quick. Where'd you find out? Um, I got a text message from a buddy of mine who said that Carrie Fisher passed away, and I was like, "What?" It's a I didn't really believe it at first. And the same deal. I was at work, and I was on uh, I was on my lunch break, and I seen it on my Facebook feed, and. First thing I did was Google it to see what was going on. Because you always see stuff on Facebook that, you know, I have to leave. And when I Googled it and saw it, I was like, wow. And I made an announcement to everybody. And they were all like, oh, you didn't hear that? And I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not on my phone all day. I apologize. But, yeah, it was rough. So, um, 2016, what a kick in the nuts. <laughs> yeah. That was rough, man. You grew up in the 80s or 90s. It really just shook up your childhood like it did. Hundred percent. You just kind of sit here and you're like, "Why is everyone leaving me?" Yeah, yeah, it, it's tough. So, what game good out of 2016? Favorite game you played in 2016? What you will say considering it your favorite game you played? I think I just read myself twice. Um, I you know I might. Oh, this is just off the top of my head. I wasn't prepared for this question. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, the two that instantly came to my head though, one is Ratchet and Clank. Because I could not put that game down. I completely platinumed right. Ratchet and Clank when that came out. And the second one is probably going to be Final Fantasy XV because that's the next game that I've been very obsessed with since it came out. I can understand that. Uh, to your Ratchet and Clank, I can agree with that. That was a really fun game. I also enjoyed the movie. Um, the movie was pretty funny. We were the two that seen it. The only <laughs> two, apparently, because that, that did nothing in the box office. Yeah, I was actually kind of shocked. You know what? And what got me mad was the reviews. A lot of reviews complained that they played it safe, and it was too much like the game. But then you're the first people that complain when it's not enough like the game. So yeah. I was actually pleasantly surprised the movie. I thought it was actually pretty good. I mean, was it a great movie? No, it was a kids movie. But I, I was satisfied with that. I was pretty happy. I agree. Um, Best game of 2016. I would say, had it not been for Christmas, I would have gave it to Uncharted 4. Was that 2016? Oh my god, it was. It was, and it was incredible. Yeah, oh my god, and so is Overwatch. I am. You're fine, man. No, I'm trash. No, like how many have we had? I completely I forgot about I had about seven of these. So we're good. <laughs> um, Un- Uncharted 4 would have hands down added to me, but my good friend sitting across from me right now got me Final Fantasy for Christmas. Uh, I probably have, I'm going to say, a good 10, 15 hours into it. I've done nothing. <laughs> Literally, probably like three, four story missions. The rest has just been side quests. Because that game was just so fun, so beautiful, and so surprisingly good. Yeah. Uh, what did they do right, man? Why is it so amazing? So, combat feels really good. Combat does feel good. Combat feels great. How good does it feel to throw that sword? Across and just teleport to teleport and go right into a combo right in somebody's grill. Yeah, that one's that one's definitely probably one of the best feelings. Um, at first, I wasn't too sure how I was gonna like it because it was one of the, one of the mechanics is everything kind of uses your mana. Yeah, and that's kind of like oh great, I'm gonna have to keep track of this in order for me to replenish it. I have to either get in cover or I have to throw my sword at a high point and teleport to it, and it'll automatically recover me. But it actually didn't hinder me as much as I thought no, it would. Yeah. 
especially when you're you're dodging so much and the the dodge system and the uh, the block and the parry system are just really well done really responsive yeah that's what i noticed like when i mess up in it i feel like you know what it was my fault it had nothing to do with the game because when it's on it's on man i agree it's definitely as you said already beautiful such a gorgeous game um and you know what i really like the banter oh between, between the four yeah. yeah it's just so good they are really funny and, and it feels real natural like it doesn't feel like lines, doesn't feel forced. They do feel like four guys handing out. Yeah, you feel um, like they, they're friends. You yeah. Know? You don't feel like, oh, they're just kind of here, four guys that randomly met up. It's like, yeah, no, definitely. they have some history. Um, it's just overall, uh, I haven't finished it yet. You have. Yes. Uh, you're still currently playing it. Yeah, because after you beat the game, you unlock secret dungeons. Ooh. I won't say anything else because you're not Please that far. Don't. Um, like I said, I got about good, I'm going to say probably about 15 hours because I played probably nonstop for the first couple of days. Only thing that got in the way was that pesky thing called work. Apparently, you got to pay your bills <laughs> or people get mad at you. You know what I mean? Or the power's going to go off and yeah. you're not playing anything. And then you're not playing anything. Um, but I kid you not, I'd get done work. And you know what I mean? I work long hour days and I'd get done work. And first thing, I'd come home, watch a little TV with my wife, take a shower, and go right into Final Fantasy. And it was just, it's a fun game to pick up and just go with, um, I've just, realized like it's, it's weird the things I enjoy. I like to put auto drive on and just watch my character chill in the backseat of the car while driving. Yeah. It's, I'm not playing, I'm not doing anything, but I'm like, this is nice. Uh, do you listen to the radio? Very Absolutely. Much? Yeah. I, I find the radio to be very nice and charming. You can customize your car, just yes. just the looks, which is also nice because I have I like to auto drive a lot too and just kind of chill. Sometimes while I auto drive, I'll like play my meter or something else because some yeah. of the rides are really long. So I consider that a good time for me to knock out maybe one of my handheld games while I'm doing it. Yep, me but, and you're um, on the same boat there, buddy. But like eventually, and I told you about this, as you're auto driving, you gain AP, which are attribute points, which you can put into your abilities and stuff like that. For people that don't really know about the game yet. So eventually you get to a point where you just want to auto-drive anyway. Because you're just like, oh, I need these points. Just auto-drive all day. What's the furthest point in the map? We're going there. It's, it's a well, well-constructed game. Um, Were you expecting I, it to be this good? No. I'm going to... I kid you not. I was... It's honestly been my... It's my favorite Final Fantasy since 10, obviously. Um, and I'm going to say it even surpassed, unless it's got a crappy ending, or the game takes a drastic turn, like Brutal Legends did. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm going to say I prefer it over 10, only because, like you said, that banter really brings you in. And then the story itself, because um, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do much research on this game. I didn't do anything. Just the beginning of the game, where it's almost like a bachelor party. That's how the game starts off, you know what I mean? Yeah. Last hurrah before you get married. And then you get past that and get into the real story, which I'm not going to ruin it for anybody because I want you to get into the real story. You're like, you get a whole new sense of being and you get more motivated. And uh, the characters, and it's finally a character that you can really get behind. Um, the prince in the game, I really like. I think he's well fleshed out. They give enough of him to really make you... Feel for this character and enjoy him, and don't overbear him so you can still identify with him. I agree. Uh, when I first started playing the game, I felt out of the four, he was the most—he was the one that was the most underdeveloped. But then, as I kept playing it, I was like, I see why, because I'm supposed to be him. Yep. Yeah, I'm supposed to put my emotions into him, mm -hmm. like what they're saying and how they feel is what I'm. So, you know, I'm supposed to be like, oh, I'm him. Right, and I, I actually really enjoyed that. Um, to go in a whole different direction. Um, when they were making Halo, that was one of the reasons they never wanted to show Master Chief's face because they always wanted you to think you were under the helmet. And I actually prefer when a game does that. I agree. I mean, give me a sense where I am that character, and I feel like Final Fantasy XV hits that balance perfectly. It's funny because uh, I bought this one. I was excited for it when it was first announced, as everyone knows from previous podcasts from 2006. And as the years kept going on, I was like, there's no way this is going to live up to expectations. There's no way this is going to be good. Bought it, and wow, I am pleasantly surprised. Like, I'm really loving it. Um, 
I put over, I think I'm at 70 something hours right now. Yeah. I'm not surprised though. I mean, between fishing, feeding a cat, going through stones, you can farm, find, finding dog tags, you know what I mean? Like uh, everything. And then, and then I just discovered bounty in the game. Which is all types amazing, you know what I mean? Like, you yeah. really feel like you're that dude, like, you know what I mean? We got this. And then when you hunt down that animal, and random people are like, Hey, thanks for handling that. You're like, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for the appreciation. Yeah, and it's, oh man, it's just a well done game. It really is. And the side, and I hate to say this because it's such a cliche, but the side quests don't feel like side quests. A lot of the side quests feels like what may, more games should make as their majority quests. Like the wrangling up of the dog tags, the emotion that that character portrays and how important it is to give these back to the family. Like, man, that feels like a real quest. Like, yeah, I do. These families need this. They need to put this man in rest. closure. And like, wow. So um, I'm really surprised about how well this game, you know, how much I enjoyed it at least. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just got to be so good. Sorry. I think it really says a lot that uh, I beat it. Even if there's more to do, some games after I beat them, I'm just like, you know what? I did the main thing. Let's just leave everything else You're welcome. there. Yeah. But man, there's, I just can't put it down. I keep thinking about more and more things I want to do in it. I even just like fishing. I could fish all day. Everything just seems so... And it's definitely a nice conversation starter because, like, me and you have been talking about this game, and it feels like I keep texting you all day about it and stuff like that, and sending you pictures. But it's, I feel like everybody gets a different journey out too, because I'm obviously not going to play the same way you did or go the same path you did. And I think it's really nice about a game. I agree. That's such a good game. It's probably my second favorite Final Fantasy. First being? Nine is still number one for me. Okay. So, and uh, I, I put more time into nine so far. I think when I finally completed nine with all ultimate weapons and got everything I wanted out of it, I think it was at like 130 something hours. Hmm. So, I mean, this game obviously still has potential to get to that. Yeah. But we'll see. I'm hoping they don't make a thousand sequels for it. I don't think they will. I don't think they're going to make any sequels. Because how well it received it's been, how great it is. However, it does bring hope in me again for Square. Um, yeah, that, that's a tough one because 10 was always my favorite. From the beginning to the end of that game, I put more hours into 10. I really enjoyed it. But I'm going to say, I, I'm pretty sure I prefer this one over 10. Yeah. Like I said, I it's unfair because I haven't finished it yet. And I don't think I'll finish it probably for a while only because... I don't have time to sit there and play like I want to, but man, this is the first game in a while that's made me debate calling out of work. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to be answering. Your employee, like, people at work listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> They're not going to believe you now. Yeah, it, it's out. true. I apologize. I won't do it. Maybe, probably. Uh, <laughs> I was actually debating the other day and I was like, you know what? It's been a while since I took some days off. Tell my boss I need a, like three days straight off, take some vacation time. I deserve this. And why would I take vacation time? Will I go anywhere? No. I'm just going to sit home and play Final Fantasy because it's just that good. Um, so how does this make you feel about the 7 remake? Now are you feeling a little better about it? Because they say that they're going to use the same combat system. For 7, obviously we're not going to have the teleporting. Oh, of course. Which, as cool as that is, do you think that that's something that breaks 7? Because I really like no, that. I game. mean, the teleporting is cool, but it works for that game. Unless, here's what makes the teleporting great is how open that game is. Because I don't, I, like I said, I, I'm not that far into it, but there hasn't been too many rule restricted areas when I'm fighting. Okay. Like, I can get pretty far away, and that's what gets me right back into the battle. The way I remember 7 is every arena was pretty restricted, so I can't see that really working for it anyway, so. Yeah, obviously for 7, since they're going in with this action RPG-type combat instead of the turn base, I think they're really going to have to open up the areas that we're fighting in, because some of these enemies are huge. Yeah. And you see the scale of the enemies in, in 15. Like, yeah. they're big in 15, 
And I feel like sometimes in the turn-based games, that scale of how big these enemies really were was lost. But I don't know if they're going to be able to do it with seven. Yeah, there was uh, that one um, uh, robot I was fighting. And uh, maybe Train can refer this with the greatest idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Note to sell for future Note episodes. for sell. This is one and done. Anyway, um, that big robot you're fighting and like taking out each of its legs, everything like that, that was pretty neat. But like you said, it needed to be roomy for that because I was constantly going behind walls and stuff, recovering my man and getting it all together, you know, teleporting to a higher area and then going down and attacking. And it's really, that's what I kind of like about it. Even though it's real time, it does have that almost turn-based feel to it because you're strategizing the entire time. Because if you go gun blazing in that game, or as I call it, sword teleporting blazing, it's not going to work out for you. And like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You'll constantly be getting hit from behind. You're going to constantly be, you know, tackled by some animal or monster or something like that. It's a very uh, trial and error game too, I feel. And it's not like super hard, don't get me wrong. But it is definitely, you have to figure out which enemies to prioritize over others. Stuff like that. But yep. such a such a great game. It is. It is. And, I, and I really hope that they make 7 just as good. Like I hope we don't leave this, go to 7 and go, you know what, I kind of just want is more. Is 7 the next one? 7 is the next one as far as we know. Um... I, I believe Kingdom Hearts 3 is obviously going to come out before 7. Mm. That's, that's my opinion, and I'm pretty sure that's how it's going to work. And then I think we're going to get the first episode of 7, because don't forget 7 is also going to be episodic. I won't talk about it. Yeah, that upsets me too. It's going to end up paying like $100 for 7 by the end of it. Uh, I think each one's going to be 60 60 Get out of here. Yeah, they said each episode is the length of a full game. Which to me is very uh, weird because there are some... Alright, so what's a full game? Though? That's my argument Four as well. hours, six hours. Uh, example, I'm playing Titanfall right now. Really good, but that's five hours I think it is. Yeah. So you have you have things on the low spectrum where it's like five to six hours. And then you have things like Witcher 3. That's 300 hours. So it's like, where are you going with this? If each episode, in my opinion, is at least... For an RPG, I would at least like 50 to 60 hours. If you can at least give me 50 to 60 hours. How long, how long was 7 originally? 7 wasn't very long. So yeah, there it wasn't. I remember finishing that game relatively in a short amount of time. If you do everything, um, like if you're going to farm for some levels, farm for items, it can get pretty like lengthy. That begs different. How much of a remake is this going to be if they're doing this? Because at the end of the day... Some of the best remake games I have were shot for shot some of the originals. Um, if I'm going in one of the best remakes I've ever played for a game, Tomb Raider, uh, the Tomb Raider Anniversary, that remake they did of Part 1, yeah. that was an amazing remake, and it was because they, they stayed close to the source material. Yeah, I agree They, they didn't go crazy overboard with different things in it, and I, don't, I hope not to get a game I don't even recognize as 7. Yeah, I, I'm expecting that, because uh, they did say they're going to change some of the story. And they definitely said that they're going to change um, the gameplay and stuff like that, but we'll see. Did you just um, a penis? Yeah, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see if um, maybe the flower girl doesn't get stabbed. <laughs> Oops, spoiler alert. She dies. Oh, what a jerk. She dies. That's probably episode two, and it's probably going to end right before this one. Yeah, it's going to be the paper the next yeah. one. Find out. Um, you ever hear that theory that like there's a way to save her because if you use the game shark or game shark to keep her alive, she has one line of dialogue after her death. No, I didn't know. Yeah, that. I've looked it up a thousand times. Just of course, is one of the things I had to know is there a way to save her. Um, square, uh, square Unix or Square or Square in general said that you know it's impossible that it was a mistake, it was a glitch. That's where that line came from. Always makes me wonder. Plus it's. Is there an alternate ending where she lived or got resurrected? Because there's some characters you just you figured, what did I do wrong that they died? My prime example, and I played it a thousand times, I've never been able to save her. Emmerich or uh, Otacon's sister, Metal Gear Solid 2. Yeah. You can't save her, man, but I tried so hard. I was like, what did I do that messed up? I tried not calling Snake for backup. I tried calling Snake immediately for backup. I tried getting perfect, like, headshot on her. She dies, man. 
can't save her. It's just the way it goes. Yeah, it's like that uh, time machine movie. Man, I'm trying to try to save her. She's just meant to die, bro. So what else are you looking forward to? What, for 2017? Yeah, let's talk about, you know, what's... What's going on in 2017? Um, you got me excited for a game coming out. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, because when I'm going to talk to KNS, I've got it. Horizon Zero. Horizon Zero Dawn. Horizon Zero Dawn. Yes. We I, talked about it briefly last time. Yes. You didn't really know it, hear about it, know anything about it. At all. Then, when, when the episode ended, showed you trailers. Correct. And now I'm really excited for it. Um, one of the things I complain about all the time, and you know this, is there's no originality on games. Like, it's a really, really original idea, and I'm actually really excited about it. Me too. A little nervous because Gorilla is not known for making RPGs. Mm-hmm. But so far, it looks like they nailed it. Like, it does not doesn't look bad at all. I feel like the worst we'll get is a decent game. You oh, I mean? yeah, 100%. Like, I, I think that Sony, even the way they're advertising and stuff, seems like they want to make this into a franchise, though. Like, it's going to be a series. Yeah. We're probably going to get more than one. And then, like I would say, some of the best games or sequels to existing properties that had a good idea first. Because as much as I love God of War, I thought it was a great game. God of War 2 was a superior game. I agree. And it's because they took the popularity of the first one and improved on it in every single way. So even if this game doesn't meet my expectations, hopefully it smells well enough. It swells. Look at that. That's nice. <laughs> smells well enough to get a sequel. And that's what kind of uh, bothers me about this, the gaming industry. I feel like too many companies, when a game doesn't do well, they, they're too quick to just throw it out and not want yeah. to do something with it. Big time. Like, um, I really like The Order 1886. I love that game, man. That game was great. And a lot of people don't like it because they complained it was too short. It and, was short. And I agree. There's not much replay value on it. I'll give you that. I agree with that, too. But you know what? game. It was really good. And the story was great. Such a beautiful game, too. Oh, it was gorgeous. And when you're going down the blimp and you can see your feet impressions, that was done. But, and you know what? I really hope they make another one. Like, we don't know if they are, but I really want another go at it. Like, you know, just take what you had. And improve upon it, like you know. Yeah, I'm. I'm hoping because uh, it's funny you mention that. I legitimately lent that to one of my coworkers, and he really enjoyed it. And it's like I feel like people that gave it a fair chance actually really liked it, and then people that jumped on that bandwagon of oh it was short, oh it was this and that. Hey, you're not giving it a fair chance. I agree. Oh, there's a lot of people that um, I tell that they should give it a try, and I'm like, it's only like six hours, you can probably be in like a weekend, maybe even one sitting if you really have the time, yeah. and then they just get turned off by that, and I'm like, just play it, it's good. It, it's so funny, I came in uh, one day to uh, a video game store, I'm saying it like everybody does now, it's GameStop, uh, <laughs> I came into GameStop one day, and I was like, looking for something new, and the guy behind the counter was like, oh, you tried to order out? And I was like, no. And he was like, yeah, people complained that it was pretty short, man, but I actually really liked it. So I gave it a chance, and I've never traded in. Like, I love that game. I refuse to trade it in. I refuse to get rid of it, because I really thought it was a solid game. And like you said, I finished it in a weekend. I mean, it was a hell of a weekend. I had a yeah. good time. Uh, just the weapons. The weapons are so fun in that game. I agree. I really, like, I'm also a big history buff. So I really like that it's just like an alternate history. History, yeah, it is neat. And it's, it's a different kind of history, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's neat. But uh, we got a lot of sequels coming out in 2017 for movies and stuff like that. But um, overall, yeah, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for South Park. Um, Fractured Butthole. That's yeah, another sequel that I'm super excited for. Super excited for that as well. Uh, Blade Runner, but that's a movie. But that's neither here or there. I, mean, I actually saw the first trailer for that. What, Blade Runner? Yeah, the new one. Starring your boy? Yeah, I oh, I love Ryan Gosling. Oh, yeah, we all know. That's something you guys are all going to learn <laughs> over this podcast running. Anything he's in, I'm seeing, and it's probably going to get an A. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm excited about that. Um, oh, and then, of course, I don't know how this didn't get brought up right away. Uh, the most anticipated sequel I'm really excited for, Resident Evil 7. That demo was amazing. That demo was amazing. And I will fight people when they say that this franchise is not that great. Okay, they've had a few duds. I'll give them an overall. That is a solid franchise. I agree. One, I mean, two. Resident Evil 2. Literally, if that like, was the only game ever released, I'd be like, you know what? It's solid. That's a great game, man. I agree. Uh, four. I'm really excited for 7, though, as well. 
Code Veronica. And it looks like they really nailed what Resident Evil should be. Because uh, I feel like for too long they've been going for this action, trying to pull in more people. Yeah. And I think this time they're like, you know what? Let's just what, get them with the spookies. It, 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 it's what happened because 4 got, was really popular. 4 was great. And 4 was generally an action game. It had a few horror elements in it, but it was overall an action game. What 4, I think, did well was because it was the start of a new idea, new engine, new franchise kind of thing, was some of the things that scared you were the fact that like you just were surprised about the you know, new kind of, what were they called, um, the parasite in the game, the zombies? I don't know, it doesn't matter. T Vogus. Oh, right, right, right. Point being, I remember the first time in four when you lock yourself into that house and they're breaking windows coming through and all that stuff. And it, that's what was scary about four. But they took that action part and they kept continuing. The same thing with five and then six, which was just an action game that had zombies. No horror. And it, once again, pretty decent game. Six was a solid game. Just no R elements in it, uh, but the demo for Seven and the trailers, they're they're terrifying. I'm super excited. Yeah, they really get me uh, jumpy. I'm excited for it. The first time I played the demo, I played with a buddy of mine. Um, he watched while I share played it on my PS4. His name's Steven. and I was jumping like every five seconds. I saw a guy walk through the door, and I paused the game. I didn't even want to keep going. I was like, uh, ah. Yeah. So I can already tell this is going to be a journey. How do you feel about it being in the Resident Evil universe, but now that the character's coming back? I think this is a soft reboot. Think so? I think it's a soft reboot for the series. What is, what is wrong with the family? T-Virus, they're going up with something new. Is it finally getting supernatural? Because they've been trying to do supernatural a few times, and then they kind of chicken out and get away from it. Uh, Devil May Cry was meant to be Resident Evil 4. Yeah, and they so got it's like Onimusha, right? Onimusha correct. Is also supposed to be a Resident Evil one, and they got scared and backed away. Uh, if you go, if you ever can find it, the original trailers for Resident Evil Four with Leon, where it was all supernatural, he was going to be fighting ghosts, and then they kind of got scared and backed away from it. So this this one does look kind of creepy, supernatural. But it's still got that whole family in it. Then you got the little girl, and there's so many theories online of who she is. Now, I definitely think the mom of that family, uh, in one of the newer trailers that they released of gameplay, it looked like she could control bees. So, um, I don't know. Maybe maybe the, like they, there is some kind of supernatural element. Maybe they can't die because we've seen the dad in another trailer. He was getting shot in the head. Nothing happens to him. On fire. Nothing happened to him. Okay. Yeah. So... Um. I don't know. And the, we know that the story is the guy went there for his girlfriend. Correct. What if that's her family? Yeah. What if she lures people there? Could be. Could be. Um, another theory I read online, which most likely not, but I thought it would be really cool, is this is going to come out that this is all a prequel. And at the end, Chris and Jill show up to investigate everything that happened to each other. This is like one of their early cases. This would be neat. You know what I mean? That could be pretty cool. Um, I definitely agree. With that. that would be nice. Um, I wouldn't mind if they didn't tie it in with anything. I feel like Capcom has these beloved characters. And they said the same universe. Why explain it's going to be the same universe if you don't bring that any characters back? Or at least drop something. That's true. Uh, another rumor at the same time, is they're all of Wesker's children. That's interesting. That's an interesting one. Um, at the same time, though, I think Capcom, as much as they have great characters, they also have a history of not supporting their characters, okay. which we've talked about before as well. So it wouldn't surprise me if they were just kind of like, you know, let's drop these guys and kind of bring in something new. Yeah. It's different, man. Going first person. How do you feel about the change? <sighs> Definitely adds to the scare factor. Yes. Because part of the... With these actions... <laughs> no more drinking for you. You are in flag. I'm flag <laughs> and it is on the podcast. <laughs> but um, the action games with the third person camera, part of the problem I had was that I could use that third person camera to my advantage. I could see around corners before I actually would turn the corner. So I think the first person really adds this that scare factor of me having to slowly peek my actual yeah. first person head around there and be like, oh. And not knowing what's behind you. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
That's the other thing. Uh, playing that with a surround sound or a really good pair of headphones is probably going to creep the hell out of me. It's... Probably test my fans. I'm generally excited for this game. Um, are we hyping it up too much? Um, maybe, but we're excited. I mean, we. When was the last time we really had a Resident Evil that looked this good? We had Six, which wasn't very well received. Mm-hmm. Operation Raccoon City, oh, yeah. which wasn't very well received, and we just had another Resident Evil game that launched this year that no one talks about, Umbrella Corp, which was that. Multiplayer only shooter. Yeah, that got and like four. It got like a two. four or two, yeah. So I mean, I think compared to everything else that we've been getting, it's it's natural to you you see something good and you're like, wow, this is the light. And the, end the demo of the was pretty solid. Short demo, but it's still a pretty solid demo. I agree. And although in the demo you don't get to experience any combat, we don't know how that's even going to be because, in my opinion, the Resident Evil games combat system is a little dated. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of the aiming's off. It just feels. It doesn't feel good anymore. It feels clunky. So the demo moving feels great, mm. but in the trailer when he was aiming, it doesn't look like you get a reticle. He doesn't put the gun directly in front of his face so that you can see down the iron sights. Yeah. So I think that's going to be a little something you got to adjust to. It looks nerve wracking. <laughs> looks really good. It looks a lot. I'm talking about trial or trial trial flagged. Talking about trial and fail, but it looks like you're going to have a lot of that in the game. I agree with that as well. Um, now, I hope they add enough replayability to it. Yeah. Now, this has to be said. Um, this comes out. This gets announced. This is getting released right after that canceled PT Silent Hill playable teaser. 100% they're taking advantage of that. Do you think so? 100%. You think they saw that... Teaser was well received and how well it was and completely fell on top of that formula. Hundred percent. I guarantee. So here's what I'm gonna say. They probably had a Resident Evil already in the works. They probably saw how well PT was received, how bad people wanted PT, and they were like, "Scratch whatever we were doing. Instead of making it third person, let's make it first person, and let's you know really bank on that factor." Well, I mean, when I first saw uh, Resident Evil the trailer for it, I was kind of shocked and I was like. This does not look like a Resident Evil game. I was like, what are they doing? And then, kind of, me and you had a discussion where you said, you know, like, let's take it back to Atari Elements. And then my wife, of all people, said something to me. And she was like, well, I mean, I guess it makes sense that it's a whole new character and everything like that. Because how many times could this outbreak and stuff happen to the same people? And I was like, you got a point. <laughs> if you don't count the side games, that's at least six times this has happened to the same people. Yeah. So, um, so I'm really excited, but yeah, I definitely feel like it's super coincidental, you know what I mean, that PT came out and it was super well received and then all of a sudden... Hey man, if Konami's not going to use it? Why not? <laughs> uh, do you regret not having a VR with a game? Uh... <laughs> I want to play it in VR, yes. Do I regret not having a VR? Probably not, because VR does not really excite me right now. Besides Resident Evil, I don't really see anything else down the pipeline that would make me want a VR. However, I really want to play this game in VR. That's what I'm saying. Um, Because I feel like it was built... I feel like this game was almost meant for VR. I've been playing uh, a few games on my phone on VR... And nothing huge, but they're actually pretty fun and decent. I was like, man, if I'm enjoying this so much, what about like actual VR and what about Resident Evil 7? <laughs> I was like, this probably would have been amazing on VR. You know what I mean? Like headphones on, can't hear anything, turn all the lights on in the house. I probably would have terrified myself. Um, so I, I'm actually really excited for it. Yeah. But do I regret not getting a VR? Um, do you remember I was all sent to get a VR, man? Do you remember what you said to me? That broke my heart. I didn't get it. I was excited for one game on VR, Batman. Oh, right. VR. And you told me. It's only like an hour long. Yeah, and I was like, nope. <laughs> I was disappointed. Yeah, it's more the, the Batman VR and a lot of the stuff that's out for VR right now to me is more like tech demos to show off what it can do. Um, I think. It's important, and Sony needs to make sure that they stick with it. They can't pull a Vita for this. If they really want it to sell and they want to prove that it's going to be something people need to invest in, they need to prove that they're going to invest in it as well. Because 
I just didn't want to get uh, once again pay all this money because what is it right now? Like six hundred to get everything. If you buy everything separately, it's about six hundred. Yeah, because you need the headset, which is four hundred. Yeah. The move controllers, which they sell a bundle pack of two, which is a hundred, but. You can probably find them pre-owned at GameStop. I think they're only 25 if you manage to get like the old PS3 ones, um, if you can find those. And then you need the camera, which is 60. So it's about 560, not including tax yeah. on all that. Uh, and then they sell a bundle, <coughs> and then the bundle's like 500. Bundle's 500, so you save some money there. But yeah. it's a little bit pricey it for... It is, it's very pricey. To not know if it's going to keep being... And it's like, like I said, there's nothing. But like, even then, I'm like, you know what? I really wanted to play Resident Evil on it, but I can turn the lights off. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can. That's my goal, right? I now. can relax and, and turn the lights off. Cause take it back to Resident Evil One. I'm gonna throw it back. I played Resident Evil One on Sega Saturn. Remember Ooh. Sega Saturn? Yeah. And I remember walking down that hallway and them dogs jumping out the window. I was so scared. I threw my controller right out of the room. <laughs> Jill, I think I was playing with Jill at the time. She got eaten. But the point being was like that. That was nerve wracking. I want to get that feeling again. Where were you when you got stuck in the room because you pulled the shotgun and the, and the ceiling started coming down on you? For Raz anymore. You almost came to Jill's sandwich. I was. You mean like physically? Where was I as a real person? Or do you remember it? Do you still remember what I'm saying? Like, I remember. Was, this was Resident Evil One, correct? Right. Yeah, I didn't play Resident Evil One until way later. Um, and here's the, so here's the thing. Uh, I have an older brother. He played Resident Evil One. I watched him. And when you first see that first zombie turn its head toward you really creepy slow, I was like, nope, not watching this, goodbye. And then I would try to like watch every so often again to be a man, and then I saw like those creepy dogs, and I was like, oh no. Yeah. Um, but when I finally did it, I would say it was probably on the GameCube when they re-released it. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. Um, so you didn't get that fun joy, man. No, I didn't. Uh, I, it took me a while to build up the courage. When I was younger, I was not into spooky games at all. Um, and then I would say GameCube is what really like Resident Evil 4 was probably the... No, Zero. Zero was the first Resident Evil that I played myself. Which is probably why it's one of my favorites. It's my second favorite in the series. And um, then I went back and did the other ones. Did the first one. And then I started playing... From there on, I've just played like spooky games. Like I've tried Fear. I've done Doom. No, done them all. I can understand. Um, literally got it on my Sega Saturn. Take back. Which is an underrated system, by the way. That's a whole other podcast. I love my Sega Saturn. I got that and Tomb Raider, the first one, at the same time. And uh, I picked playing as Jill in the Resident Evil game, because anybody that first got Resident Evil would remember if you played as Jill, you got the gun to start off with, Crystal to start off with that stupid knife. And uh, I remember I was playing the back door so much that I would get confused. And I'd be climbing something in Resident Evil and be like, why can't I do a backflip? Oh, that's right, that's Tomb Raider. That's it. <laughs> but man, uh, and I'm, I'm hoping to get that magic back, though, that, that scariness. Um, the only other time I can remember being super nervous was playing Resident Evil 2 for the first time. Going from Resident Evil 1, that started off super slow. You had to look for the danger in Resident Evil 1 to the way 2 starts off with surrounded by zombies. On fire. Good luck. <laughs> and I was like, who starts a game off like this? <laughs> One's like tiptoeing you in. Yeah, and, and two was like, there it is. Good luck. Have fun. Um, so, solid games. And you know, I kind of wish, um, I found out years later that uh, Code Veronica was meant to be three. That's their official sequel. But because of their contract with Sony, we got Nemesis as three, which was supposed to be the side story. Kind of always want to go back now and play it one, two, Code Veronica to see that as it was meant to be played. Because uh, three isn't technically a sequel, it takes place during two at the yeah. same exact time. So, solid games. <gasps> Maybe someday. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. Now that they're re you know what? Now that they're re releasing them, they released what, four, five, and six for the PS4? Yes. Uh, they released one and zero for PS4. I'm hoping they do Code Veronica. I would love to play Code Veronica. I think uh, I think they might do two. That wouldn't that wouldn't be too bad. And then. Oh, they're talking about remaking two finally. Yes, and then I would say 
instead of doing three, they should probably do Code Veronica so that people can actually get the real. Probably one of my favorite Resident Evil's Code Veronica was super good. I actually never played it. Oh, so And good. I told you before because I thought that that was the side one. Correct. Yeah. Super terrifying. Huh. Super I'll terrifying. I'll have to give it a shot. But uh, speaking of 2016, 17, and Spookies, let's talk about that new Alien trailer. Ooh, yeah. So, um, not Prometheus this time, huh? Looks... Yeah, they dropped that title real fast. Yeah. I actually liked Prometheus. I didn't hate it. No, it definitely did. Um, I don't think they got the element of, and I don't think Alien has been the element of what Alien should be for a while. And one of the things I really liked about the first Alien movie, and to this day I still like about it, it, that makes it the perfect, one of the best horror movies in my opinion, is that it's a haunted house that you can't escape. Correct. Because you're in space. Yeah. There's no running out, there's no doing anything. Um, and this one looks like they're kind of uh, getting back onto that. I definitely say so. It definitely has that creepy element. Um, I'm hoping, one of the things I would discuss with people, I love Aliens. Aliens is a great movie. But what I liked about Alien was it was legitimately one alien strategically picking people off. Old school horror. You know what I mean? I agree with that. 12 Indians. And I'm hoping that this one captured that again. That uh, slow one by one getting taken off by one just well one done. Um, alien 3 tried to capture that magic again. It didn't really work out because you know we'd already dealt with Aliens. But um, hopefully... Uh, so this definitely looks more like a sequel than Prometheus did. Um, where do you think it takes place, timeline-wise? I actually think it's right after Prometheus. You think so? Yeah, because uh, Michael Fassbender's still in the movie. Yes. Um, so we saw that. From my understanding, there's going to be two of him. There's going to be, the, from my understanding, the machine that was in the first Prometheus movie, as well as a 2.0, basically, version of his same robot. Um, so that's that's going to be interesting to see uh, if they're actually going to be different or if they're going to kind of be like on the same side type of thing. Right. Um, but I, I definitely think it's going to be right after Prometheus. I think we're going to see the evolution of the Xenomorph. Because we did see a Xenomorph in Prometheus right. that was very different than what we are used to. Well, a lot of people don't know this now. I'm going to break it down for them now. Anything. Whatever the um, face hugger attaches to it takes that formation yes of it so the xenomorphs that we mostly see are the human ones humanoid where the one at the end took the place of and i can't remember the name of the alien species from prometheus uh, i thought they were called the um something so simple dude. i thought it was the builders or something the builders or the creators or something like that yeah, yeah. that's the xenomorph that's why the one in um three was bull like because it came out of the cow the cow that's part. right yes that makes sense now. yes um, actually, you know what? You might be a little too young for this. When two came out, they released all these awesome toys, and uh, one of the coolest ones was a xenomorph coming out of a gorilla. So it was a gorilla one. It had these like huge blue hands. What? Yeah, and you could put it in the bathtub, and it filled up with water, and it sprayed water out. That's sick. It was. It was awesome. <laughs> I still remember that toy. Now, do you think that xenomorph from Prometheus, xenomorph from Prometheus, is going to play a part in this? Because um, it was a very different one, do you think that's kind of going to be the new... You know how they have the queens that are always like the big boss? You yeah. think, since that was technically the first? To be honest though, you know, the egg in the trailer looks straight like the egg from Alien 1. And the face hugger looks straight like the face hugger. In Alien. Yeah. I agree. And if it looks like they were like, you know, remember the things we used in Prometheus? That yeah. Didn't seem like it worked? We're just going to go back to what we know does. Prometheus, like I said, t- not a terrible movie. If you go in expecting an alien movie, though, you're going to be very disappointed. I can understand that. And I definitely see where they're going with this one. Um, do you think we're going to see the Xenomorph a lot, or do you think it's going to be pull a Godzilla on us? I don't know. Um, what about the first one, Alien? You didn't see him until, what, the last 10 minutes of the movie? Yeah. You finally got a good look at him, so who knows? Uh, funny enough, did you know that that was the third attempt at the design for the Xenomorph? Really? Yeah, you know what happened to the other two? No. Producers and studios wouldn't allow them to do it because it was too scary. And Xenomorph is terrifying looking, so I'm wondering what the other two look like. <laughs> that's a scary yeah. alt. Wow, that's kind of crazy. Now. I feel like that's probably going to be on my mind now. Before the... Okay. Um, there's all these rumors now that they're rebooting the franchise. 
We're rebooting it. Yeah, I, I hear that's pretty much going to go from this point on. Yeah, well, it's supposedly now, according to this, three and four don't exist anymore. Yes. So, um, how do you feel about movies doing that? That happens more often than not anymore. Yeah, but I with Aliens, I can definitely understand it. I think three and four are kind of just not that as great as the first two. Four, I give them three out of three. I'm actually not. Too hard on three wasn't horrible, but it wasn't. It was definitely not as good no. as one and two, and I'm okay with them saying, you know what, these two didn't happen. Let's just clean slate and go from here. As long as they don't Superman it, where they're like, oh, Superman Returns takes place right after Superman Two. Oh wait, it's not a good movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we have. What else was doing this? Well, pretending like sequel yeah. never happened. The only one I can think of off the top of my head is uh, Superman Returns. Pretended like uh, Superman That's 3 right. and 4 Quest of or Quest for Peace never yeah. happened. Uh, but it, it's happened more often than not that they just pretend like sequels just never happened. Oh, well, aren't they doing it with uh, Jurassic Park as well? Or am I wrong? Don't yeah. they pretend that Lost World like never happened, the second one? I don't know. It could be, Russ, because you know what? When they did mention it, they only talked about the first park. So yeah. it might be Lost World and 3 never happened. I, I think so, but I could be wrong. Um, I'll have to look into that one for the next pop, for next time. So because they're talking about this new one coming out, Jurassic World Two is a sequel to Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. Yes. So I'm rather curious on what they mean by that. I have a theory. Maybe that's for another podcast. Okay. You look intrigued though. I do. I'm actually pretty excited to hear it. Um, excited for the new alien? I am very excited. I'm very excited. And uh, did you play the Alien Isolation at all? I did. The first six hours are great, in my mm. opinion. It really falls off after that, though. I think it overstays its welcome. It's one of those games that probably would have been better if it was only 40 bucks and six hours long instead of 60 bucks and trying to be like 24 hours. Were you scared? The first six hours, yeah. yeah. That, that's exactly... So, like, solid six hours, yeah, I can see that. That's exactly I'm, why I think afterwards it falls off. I'm hoping this movie has that same eeriness to it. Yeah, and that's what I think Alien should be. You know, that you should get that feeling when you're playing a game or watching a movie. Mm-hmm. That, um, but I want that feeling like this thing's unkillable. It's survive, not defeat, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm actually... But I'm still really excited for that game. Or a game. Movie, super excited for it. Um, anything else movie-wise you're excited for? Yeah, there's, there's quite a few things. Uh, one I will say right now, because I also think they they might pull out the game with it, is Spider-Man Homecoming. And I, I really think Marvel, I mean, uh, Sony is going to bring out their game this year with it. Or I think that to me seems like the logical thing to do, to feed off of the people that go to see the movie. Because usually after you see a movie, some people are like, oh man, I really would like to play a game in that universe. Yeah. And you see like game sales for those, even the old games go up because you're just like, oh, the movie came out, people want to play these games, so here you go. Yeah, definitely. So I definitely think Sony should take advantage of that, whether they will, probably not, because what, Spider-Man just got revealed last year, was it? Yeah. And so I don't think, and they said when it was revealed that it was still in very early stages of development. So unless they really just... Pushed it forward. I don't think it's coming, but I'm old enough now, and I've been along now now to know not to get too excited for games because they get pushed back and they get canceled more often. Than well, that's why Sony. I don't know if you've noticed for every game they've announced recently, there's no date, there's no year window, nothing. And I think because they're just like you know what, you guys get so upset whenever we delay a game because it's not ready. You rather us put out shit. We're just not going to tell you when it's coming. I remember. Um, Daredevil. When it got announced, I was so excited for this game. Trailer after trailer got dropped and everything, and then it got canceled. That was a, a heartbreaking thing. So yeah, yeah, I've realized now not to get too excited for the game because I'm still waiting for Beyond Good and Evil too. <laughs> Even like half the world. Yeah, it's never gonna happen, I guess, huh? That was a game that never really um stuck with me. I thought it was good. It but got very overrated in my opinion. But I, I, agree. I agree that there's so many overrated games. I agree Final Fantasy VII is an overrated game. Good game, overrated. Completely agree with that as well. Um, there's there's tons of overrated games. But to me, when people say a game's overrated, I say, well, you, you gotta give it this credit because there's a reason it's overrated. It's still a decent game. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, people just swear by it and forgive it. So at the end of the day, Final Fantasy VII has its issues, and so did Beyond Good and Evil. Um, and to me, there's plenty of games that never got their credit they deserve. Psychonauts. Such a great game. I love that game. I've waited forever for a part two. We're That's finally, not gonna happen, man. We're getting it. Is it? Yeah. I don't believe it. Got kickstarted and he right. made the money for it, so we'll see. But uh Oh, you know what last Kickstarter I got excited for? Mighty number nine. Mighty number nine! Okay. That was so good, wasn't it? I, I, what did everybody think of that game? Please tell me, sir. It was trash. It was trash. Well, how are the voiceovers? At least they were great, right? <laughs> God, I hate oh, that's right. Word. He took our money and he shoved it up his ass and said, you know what? I'm not doing anything with this. <laughs> I'm so tired of Kickstarter campaigns. Um, I believe no, it. No. <laughs> You're <laughs> like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it, sir. <laughs> Make your own damn money. All right. I've only been burned by one so far. Uh, and that was my number nine. But I've also kickstarted Battle Chasers. Nightmare. You ever read the comic? No, you're making a yawn. Alright, whatever. Battle Chasers is going to be a turn-based RPG. Uh, it actually looks really good. Uh, and I love the art style from it because it actually looks like something from the comics. So I'm really excited for that. And that's actually, every time I show more stuff on I'm getting more and more excited. I did Ukulele because I loved Banjo-Kazooie. That's another one that's looking like it's really going to scratch that itch of a platformer that we Maybe. haven't had in a while. Maybe. And um, Bloodstain. Uh, that's by Igarashi, the guy who made Castlevania. Yeah, I did hear about that one. Super excited about that, and uh, they played it. I played a demo of that. The demo was solid and really good. So hopefully that full game actually is, but it got pushed back to 2018. It's supposed to come out last, well, this year in 2016. And uh, the last one I did was Divinity 2 because Divinity Original Sin was amazing. But I can't. Really, I don't really have too many complaints so far, but we'll see where it goes. The next, I won't do a Kickstarter ever, unless it's Tail Con Curdle sequel, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure I'm the only person I ever played that game, so probably not ever happen. I can't be, because I went and looked it up on like Amazon to see if I could find a cheap copy, and things like $300, $400 to buy on PlayStation 1, so I can't be the only one that was obsessed <laughs> with this game. But you know what? Sometimes like the price doesn't mean that it was good. It was good, though. I don't know. I don't believe you. I never played it. It was a cop that happened to be a dog who happened to put cats who were thieves in jail. And he, for no reason, had a giant mech suit. Sounds like Ape Escape. <laughs> you know, it doesn't need to be anything. It was incredible. I played that game so much. Ape Escape with a dog. <laughs> Getting dog. cats instead of monkeys. It was so good. And then the deep storyline, the crystals. Ah, oh, such a great game. The Ape Escape. Such deep a storyline. Such the a great monkey. game. That's the Kickstarter I'll do, sir. So when he announces that, you're getting all my money. Right? I might put the house up for that one. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got to do to make this happen, buddy? We're living in the, in the car now, kids. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't understand these Kickstarter campaigns. It's so weird now, the days that, like, you know, finance this if you want to enjoy it. Well, that's... Yeah. Isn't the, me buying it what financing is? Isn't that what financing is? <laughs> the nice thing with the... But the, it's hard because there are companies, and I, we, we know this for a fact, Capcom is one of them, that they do not like to take risk anymore. They don't release a Mega Man game because Mega Man doesn't sell. It doesn't. You can look at any of the sales of any Mega Man game, and their sales are pretty god awful yeah I, uh, after you said that I, I had to believe and I looked it up and the best franchise Mega Man done wise is Battle Network yeah that's the only selling one they did and that's why they made like 30 of those yeah and then uh, even that started to fall mm-hmm. off, so they just stopped and people don't get that and I didn't get it at first either because I'm a big Mega Man fan as well and I want more Mega Man he's a fighting robot he is Mega Man but I think I think Capcom just needs to market it better. And I think pro- one of the problems with Mega Man was he never really evolved with his crowd. I think another problem with Mega Man is there he's his own worst competition. Because I know people that swear by the Legends only franchise. Only Mega Man to play. Some people only play X. Some people uh, stay true to the originals. That's Some what I am. Two through nine. My favorite Mega Man. And I love Legends. Legends 1 and 2. I'm still waiting for Legends 3. You know what I mean? And uh, 
And I also was a fan of the X series, but not as much as I was the Legends. X is my middle ground too. Um, I actually never played Legends. That's one that I gotta give. It. You're giving me this look like why are we even friends? I'm disgusted. I'm sorry. But um, you know what? Legends is great, man. All right. It takes place way in the future, after Mega Man, after Mega Man X. Maybe I'll get on my beta. Uh, the world's covered in water, and you play as the Mega Man with an awesome haircut and no helmet. Can I get a helmet? You can get a helmet in the game, absolutely. Oh, yes. awesome. All right. Now I'm a little more into it. It is. It's really good. I'll check it out. Like I said, I'll, uh, I'll probably pick it up on my beta. Um, I have three copies in this house. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I tried so hard to get my daughter into that. She just wasn't feeling it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not interested in this. I'm like, what? This is so good. <laughs> Daddy, can I go back to running around the house? <laughs> That's way more fun. <laughs> I was like, come on, this is so good. Forget all these ponies and stuff. Man, Mega Man Legends. She's like, no. <laughs> this is boring. I was like, ah. That's such a disappointment. Like, you go on your way and you find a game, you're like, oh, my kids are going to love this. <laughs> and then they're like, you just want to share your childhood yeah, with them. They're like, what is this? This is so boring. Anybody that's not a parent yet, I will say this, don't push anything on your kids, because they're not going to like it. And then like a year or two later, when you're done, they'll come up to you like they just found it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's the treasure of the house. Eight times I tried to sit my children down and watch them before time, never interested. Four years later, have you seen this movie? It's so good. This is Land Before Time. Are you kidding me? I tried to get you to watch this so many times. We had no idea. No, all right. So, another five years we'll be doing this podcast. I'm like, guess what? She loves Mega Man Legends. Favorite game of all time. Uh, I think we can call that an episode five. Happy New Year, man. Happy New Year, man. Uh, for the slurring in the beginning and the end and the slurring throughout, I apologize. I got a little happy and I was drinking. Um, <laughs> I will probably continue to drink later tonight. But drink responsibly. No drinking and driving. Yes, everyone be safe out there. Um, this is The Enthusiast with Episode 5. Uh, be sure to hit that like button if you liked it. If you didn't, give us a thumbs down and give us a comment. Um, you can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and SoundCloud. And hopefully soon we're going to be up in iTunes and have our own website up and running. Fingers crossed. And make sure you let us know any time topics you like us talking about or anything else that you would enjoy to hear um, we're also going to start bringing a third person on every once in a while to change things up so I look forward to that yeah we're pretty excited about that as well um, so this is Will Zabo and Jesse Nazario and we are out